Today in RJ's workshop, we're going to take an old bobble jack, an old truck cross member, and some flat stock, and turn it into All right, the goal of this project is to make the tow jack because I need to be able to lift and move my lathe and mill around inside the new workshop. Right now I'm able to do that with a large bar and uh, use it as a lever to lift it up to put it on my machinery skates, but when I want to get close to a wall or something like that, I'm not going to be able to get a four foot bar in there. So if you haven't, if you're not familiar with a machinery or a uh, tow jack, uh, this essentially I'm going to make a z-shaped bar that's going to sit on top of the ram and then come down here and have a foot and that foot will go underneath the machine and when you jack up on the jack it'll lift. What I'm going to do is take a piece of half inch and this is all materials I've got on hand a uh, piece of half inch by four inch flat bar six inches long the jack will sit on that. <clears throat> then we'll cut out a small section where the toe will go down into. So that'll sit inside of there. And if you just made that Z-shaped bar, the jack is going to want to naturally tip over. Not a lot because there's not going to be a long lever arm over here, but still you want to do something to try to keep it stable. Typically, if you've got a jack with a large amount of base area, you can drill and tap or drill some holes and drill and tap and put down into this uh, bottom plate. On this jack, I've got a real thin casting with two spots that I could put holes, but none in the back. So, what I'm going to do this is an old chunk of truck cross member, and this is going to get cut out. Basically, it's going to become a piece of angle and it is going to get welded <clears throat> to the base plate and then I will weld in here something that will space the jack so that the jack if it tries to tip it's gonna hit on the cross member here and then the Z bar will <clears throat> sit on top something like that come down to the toe so when you're lifting all the forces will come against this member instead of trying to pull the jack over. And the Z-bar is just going gonna, gonna to be captured on the top of the uh, ram here. And when you're done, all you do is take the Z-bar off and the jack will actually come right out. One other thing I want to point out is the orientation. Uh, many people in some of the commercial jacks, some commercial jacks you can actually rotate, but I'm going to put the toe on the side of the jack here because I want to be able to come up against a wall, operate this, and the lathe is going to be right here. If I turn it 90 degrees, I'm going to have to use a jack handle and something like that, so I'm going to need a good foot of space between the wall and the jack. <clears throat> I've seen it done both ways. For me, this is going to work the best. All right, let's cut some pieces.
here's all the rough components of the unit getting close to ready for welding. Basically we've got this is inch and a half by three eighths flat bar here. This is the half inch lug that we cut out of the base. And then this is some two inch by quarter inch that we drilled the hole in. Uh, you can see pretty well here that I've got I put a very large chamfer. So this is three eighths I put about 5 16 uh, chamfer on both ends. What I'm doing is, is I've got this chamfer here and I'm going to weld it in this orientation. That way I can get a good deep weld on this side and then on the inside corner here I will do a large fillet weld as well. So we'll get good weld on both sides. And then in the same vein on the bottom Deep, chan penetrate, or deep chamfer on the outside and then we'll put a big fillet weld on the outside. Last thing and then this plate will get welded underneath here which will give another area to weld on that um, but this is what will lo this is what will locate onto the top of the jack. And the one last thing I'm going to have to do uh, is some sort of uh, rail. I'm going to put a little bit of a guide on either side so this toe, you know, when, once you, right now it's nested in the base, but as soon as you jack it up a half an inch, this thing's going to be up and out of the channel. So I want to provide a little channel so it can't rock back and forth at all. few more things to get cleaned up and then we're going to start welding. Okay, I've got it clamped up to an aluminum block. This way and this way it'll hold everything nice and square. Get a heavy weld in there and then the aluminum will cool it off quicker. We've got all the major components welded up. Let's take a look at this now. Everything needs a little bit of finishing still. A little less likely to need a tetanus shot when, wearing, or when using it. But jack fits in here nicely. I don't have the stop uh, to keep it from tilting yet. The foot piece sits on nicely and you can operate it jacks up reasonably well. So really the main things that I have left to do is I'm going to take this piece of scrap I've got, it's about 300 thousandths wide and on the jack there's the body of the jack and then the top there's a nut. I'm actually going to weld this across the top so it will interact with the nut but not on the body. The body's a thinner sheet metal, uh, I believe, so I want it to touch the nut. So I'm going to weld this on up here and then just take a grinder and just scalp, scallop out uh, an area so that this fits. So at the same time, it, this base will touch this face at the same time as the nut will. And then this, the, the jack will stay vertical then.
time to give this thing a bit of a workout. I've actually already gone around and tried it. This is the headstock end of my Grizzly G0509 lathe. Uh, it's 3,000 pound lathe. The headstock end, watch, it stays nicely in line. I'm pretty happy with it. To load on it, just start going. I'm pleased. So I think that's the next step. This is we're going to use some rebar and just make our guide plates. Clean this thing up, blast some paint on it, and pick some machines up. All right, I just want to go over a couple things. The goal of this build was just that, to build something. You can buy these. I looked at one up online uh, for a model similar size to this was about $150. I didn't do an extensive research to see how much they were because I wanted to build one. Uh, I just wanted to get a chance to use one of my tools and build something, it was fun. Uh, ends up consisting of a foot, a base, and a four ton bottle jack. Um, one thing I want to uh, just talk about real quick is think about your design. If you're going to do something like this, you're going to be dealing with a lot of forces. Uh, don't just think about how it should work. In all reality, this thing always should be in a vertical orientation. There should be no uh, horizontal loads. But what happens if there is a horizontal load? Something hits the machine, something hits whatever. You'll see later in the build that I decide to put some uh, horizontal braces on here. So for the cost of a couple of pieces of metal, it does um, give me some peace of mind in case the, everything goes wrong. So don't just think about how it should work. Just try to think about the possible scenarios where things could screw up. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on, again, you're working with a lot of forces here. My intention for this is uh, to lift the machinery up high enough to get my machinery skates under there. So I'm only lifting maybe two inches at most. Uh, the mantra in the fire service and rescue services is lift an inch, curb an inch. So for every inch you lift up, you're going to put blocking underneath um, so that at most you're going to drop an inch. On this, quite often it's probably going to be lift a half inch, crib a half inch, because I'm just not lifting up that much and I can slide blocking in there right away. So if one of my welds has a catastrophic failure, it's going to drop a half an inch. Probably no harm, no foul. I'm never going to put my hand in between a load and uh, while it's supported by this. It's just not worth it. The only thing you put under uh, a lifted object is something that you're willing to give up a pusher bar, something like that. Uh, you know, when it comes time to put the uh, rollers in, slide them in. You know, if you can't slide it in from the outside, use a pusher bar. If it gets pushed in too far, have a, uh, a, a hook, you know, a pry bar or something with a hook that you can slide it back out with. So, there is some, you know, there is a possibility of catastrophic failure with something like this. Think about that ahead of time. Um, in this case, I think I've get, mitigated the risks or thought about the risks ahead of time because I'm only going to be lifting so much. All right, that's another project done in RJ's workshop. Thanks for coming with me. Uh, like, subscribe, please comment if you got any good comments. Um, I will be putting this to use pretty shortly, putting my machinery into its final place, and uh, I'll bring you along when I go to do that and show you the skates in action as well. So thanks for watching. See you again soon.